Windsor Haven, Florida, a small town with a population just shy of 60,000, is renowned for its beautiful chain of lakes and its notable stars such as WNBA player Tiffany Hayes and country music singer Jake Owen. But nestled in this small town is a woman looking to make change and impact among her community and a city that has become a second home through her organization, Samarita Global Outreach. Hi, my name is Maurice Nelson. I am a physical therapist by occupation, and I dabble a little in business, but what I like to do most is ministry under the organization Samarita Global Outreach. In today's episode of Road to 1000, we'll explore the work that Maiz does through her nonprofit organization, Samarita Global Outreach, dive into her Haitian roots and the significance of today, May 18th, also known as Haitian Flag Day, and have a meaningful conversation with some leaders who not only impact her work, but are her greatest supporters. Samaritan Global Outreach is a nonprofit organization. We are in the United States. We are in Haiti, we're in the Dominican Republic, and we are there to help people, we educate them. A lot of times we're rescuing them first because they come from all walks of life, you can imagine. We educate them and then we, we motivate them, then we empower them, we help them in whatever way we can. What made you decide to like do a global outreach? Like why go global with it? Yeah, I didn't decide, God did. <laughs> Yes, because um, uh, we started here in the United States. We started out as a little prayer group, a little prayer line. And then eventually more and more needs started coming our way. And then, um, you know, somebody told us about Haiti. There was a, a, a group that needed our help in Haiti. And there we were. And then the Dominican Republic came. So it's not something we decided to do. It's just something that was thrown our way. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So like what inspired you to be like, you know what? I'm willing to take on this challenge to be like, I will be the person to do this. I have always been that person. I've always loved helping people. I grew up in an environment that taught me um, the importance of, of being a good neighbor, of being a good child, and you know, all this mushy stuff. So when this opportunity came, it, it wasn't strange to me because it's something that I had been doing all my life, even as a young girl. Um, ever since I read the story of the Good Samaritan, Samarita came to mind. And so I've been doing it all along. So, well, I had been doing it all, all along. So that, um, you know, when the opportunity came to actually do it officially, it really wasn't that foreign to me. Samarita Global Outreach mission is to motivate, educate, and empower individuals to excel toward higher standards, to do more good. Doing more good is essential to our survival, I believe. Doing more good, I think, it helps us in so many ways. It helps us to feed more people. It helps us to give a chance to a kid who would not, you know, otherwise have an opportunity to even go to school. But at the higher level is, I try to reach out also, or we, because I don't do this by myself, but we try to reach out to people who may already be doing good. And when we come in, whatever little bit we can add, you know, makes them be able to go a little bit farther. And so we're always looking for more. I go by the saying, plus haut, plus loin. It just means higher and farther. So that, I live by that every day. Even if it's an inch that you move forward, it's, it's you've gone higher and you've gone farther. And so I think no matter how much good we're doing, we can always do a little bit more. Maiz named her outreach mission, Samarita, drawing inspiration from the parable of the Good Samaritan, as told in the Bible. This story, found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, highlights a Samaritan's act of kindness. Unlike others who disregarded a suffering man beside the road, the Samaritans stopped to help him, embodying the essence of compassion and neighborly love. This powerful narrative resonates deeply with Maiz, reflecting her faith and her commitment to helping those in need. My faith is at the center of everything that I do. Um, at least I try for it to be. And um, it drives everything that I do to the point where I always tell people like, um, I'm a physical therapist, I dabble a little bit in business as well. Even when I'm doing business, it's my faith. When I'm doing physical therapy, it's my faith because there are certain things in business that are not available to me only because I'm a Christian, only because I wanna live out the gospel. I don't wanna just talk about it, but I wanna be able to live it. And when I go to bed at night, feel like I didn't betray my beliefs or my values yeah. and so it's in everything that I do to the point where sometimes you know people look at me and they'll give me you know the egari you know you're an egari no I'm not a fool I just will not do this because it's not available to me it doesn't align with what I believe in and so sometimes there are there are opportunities that you miss out on also because of that 
Uh, but there's no better way that I that I would love to live. Um, so I guess the, 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 the short answer to your question is it's, it's at the center of everything that I do. And it motivates me. Yeah. It gets me going. Yeah, I think faith is so important to the foundation of anything. That's one thing I've been learning as I've gotten older. It's like if you don't have something to keep your feet grounded to, like you'll fly with the wind and go. And you, mm-hmm. especially in business, like people will come from left and right to offer you the world. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like kind of like how Satan offered Jesus those 40 days. Like, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. And it's enticing, you know, but you have to be able to remember why you do what you do and who called you to do it. And I think that's the part that many people struggle with. But I think for me, as I've grown in my faith, I've realized without God, there's no power to anything and there's no strength. And now you're relying on your strength, which makes it harder. And so I find like, depending on faith, depending on God, it makes the job a little bit more easier. It doesn't take away, you know, the hardness, but it makes it a little bit more easier because you're not, I guess, moved by every single thing that comes your way. Absolutely. And um, it's, it's like having laws, right? Um, if we didn't have laws, people would run red lights. Well, we wouldn't have red lights, but, but I'm saying people would do whatever yep. they want. But what's great about your faith and as it relates, you know, to, to guiding principles and laws is that you're happy, you know, in a sense. And, and happy, you define it in a different way. It's not that you're always happy to be sacrificing yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you find peace because you didn't do that. Later on, you're at peace with yourself. Later on, you don't have to worry about what could have happened or you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so you and you and, and when you go to bed, you're, you're happy. You're like, OK, I stood up for God. I stood up for God today and I feel good about it. So it's, it's a different kind of thing, you know, but 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 it follows the lines of having laws that you live by. One of the offerings of Samarita is helping churches and organizations train up their leaders to impact their communities. I was fortunate to participate in one of Maiz's leadership conferences led by renowned Haitian pastor, Pastor Delto, something that is very important to Maiz. It was so important to me that um, I decided, you know, that it was time here to stop all the other things that we were doing as far as um, conferences were concerned and to concentrate on bringing to Florida and here, Winter Haven, bringing a leadership conference here um, with the hope that even if we don't get a lot of people who respond, it doesn't matter. But those who do respond, that they're going to go back and look at their processes differently. They're going to go back and see um, direct um, connections between them learning, between them having an open mind, and making a greater difference in the lives of the people they serve. And so I, I am, I would say, empowered by them and I'm motivated to continue to bring this leadership conference to Orlando and to grow it, to try and get it to be bigger every day. And I think um, Pastor Delto, you know, from um, Georgia, who's always willing to come in and uh, facilitate it for us. Amazing. I think people also misconfuse leadership to always mean like you're the top, like the CEO or the boss. But oftentimes, sometimes a leadership role can be a smaller role, you know, because every role is important. And I think if people stop looking at, oh, well, I want to be the top dog and start looking at, okay, what role am I playing? Why am I in this role? And how can I be impactful? You'll be surprised. Like I know people who have gone into leadership because they started at a smaller role and they did it so well that the people at the top are like, oh, you're the one I want. And so I think that instead of always looking at leadership as, oh, I need to be the CEO, it is important to be like, okay, how do I do my job, my position, the best of my ability so that it can help the whole organization? Girl, that is so insightful. <laughs> I was, um, I was watching a, uh, um, I was watching a, um, like a program. It's, it's kind of like a conference that they recorded and by really people who know what they're talking about. Yeah. And they were talking about going into an organization and determining who really the leaders are, who the real leaders are. And what they taught you when you when you go in, how to do that. And, and, and what I discovered from watching it, and, and it was mind blowing, is that the person who carries the title, not always the leader. It's usually somebody way down, who's humble, who doesn't make a lot of noise, but people love and respect and admire. And when that person speaks, everybody listens. And so that's what we, the people with the title, they need to understand that so that they can, they can empower those people, so that they can see those people and understand how those people can actually make or break them. Maie's work is not just done here locally in Winter Haven, but also takes her globally to countries like Haiti and the Dominican Republic. As Haitians everywhere celebrate Haitian Flag Day today, it's a great reminder of the rich history and the triumphs of the Haitian Revolution. 
It's a remembrance for all Haitians, for all that they fought for and have overcome as a nation. Today is very important for us in Samarita, and it's very important for me personally because I, um, I love the Haitian people. I'm Haitian. Um, I love everything Haitian. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's bittersweet because of the current state of our country. So I'm happy that we have such a rich, beautiful history. But at the same time, look at where we are today. Um, but, you know, when, whenever I feel a certain way, um, the history of Haiti helps me out and that I'm able to go on the internet, I'm able to look up Google the Citadel, and I'm able to take a look at what a mighty fortress it is. And I'm able to remember what took place there, um, how our brothers and sisters, our ancestors fought, you know, and how they got that thing built. Um, it, it, it is monstrous in a, in a, in a, in a good way. And, um, and they did it pretty much with bare hands. It, it's just amazing. So when I look at that and I, and, I, and I look at symbolically what it represents, so it, it's a physical thing and it's also a symbolic thing, it makes me feel like I can do anything because the same hands that built it, the same blood, you know, that they had in their bodies, you know, flows through my veins. Haitian people are very proud people. They are known for being the first to free themselves from slavery and gain independence under the leadership of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. However, life in Haiti is tough right now. Despite their proud history, they currently face serious challenges. The country is under a severe travel warning due to ongoing gang violence and political instability, which started worsening after their president, Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated in 2021. For Maïse, being Haitian means dealing with these heavy realities. So how has what's going on in Haiti impacted your outreach? Like, has it stopped you guys from being able to do the work you need to do? Like, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it stopped us because we're not able to travel there anymore. Um, we used to be able to go there and meet with um, pastors over there. And then we would travel to, you know, different regions um, and, and, and go out and do the work of ministry. We've not been able to do that. Um, it's even It had even gotten to the point that where even when you have things that you want to send to them. So we have the items that the people need. Need, You have the people in great need, and yet we can't get it to them because of politics or whatever. And so that is so frustrating. When people are dying of hunger, they're dying for whatever, and then you have them, they're here, they're stockpiled in your garage, or in your, and, and you can't get it to them. Yeah. It, it's so horrible. So yeah, it has greatly um, impacted us negatively. Samaritan runs a global outreach out in the Dominican Republic, running several ministry programs. With tensions rising high between the Dominicans and Haitians, having a mission there becomes even more intensified. But that hasn't stopped Maïs and her outreach, Samaritan. What are you guys doing there as far as like your outreach there? Um, we have actually all three programs um, going on there. The Super Champs, the uh, From Kaju, and the, and the Heroes for the men. And we try to do whatever we can through those programs. So we have, for example, and, and I have to say, this is really important. We never um, operate in a place without the covering of a church. So we have um, a wonderful church over there, Los Hermanos Principe de Paz, uh, in my Spanish. Uh, <laughs> and they are actually, there are 13 churches now, right? But we're in three of them. Okay. And so, and, and each program is in a different church kind of. So they go to the Bateas, Bateas, where a lot of the Haitians um, are, really, really impoverished. It's where they used to go and work in the cane, sugar cane field. So they're very impoverished there. And so whatever they do, remember, help people do more, yeah. more good. So we help them in whatever way we can. Okay. Um, so that's primarily how we're operating over there now. Yeah. And, and of course, with the Super Champs, helping them go to school, those who are not able to afford the school fees. We operate that way. Despite the challenges and uncertainties in Haiti, the work must continue for Maïs. She keeps hope alive and continues her work by educating her local community about kingdom building and advancing the gospel. What I do, especially here locally, I'm really involved in education. I'm involved in, um, you know, kingdom building, helping people to understand 
what they need to do to further the kingdom of God, the Great Commission. Every program, every activity that we have is geared towards getting people to think about that final thing, that final destination of winning more souls for Christ and bringing more people into the kingdom of God. Maiz credits two pastors in her life for helping her push forward her mission and stay grounded in her work. My name is Pastor Daniel St. Fleur. I'm the lead pastor of this church, Church Assembly Evangelical of Winter Haven. I've been pastoring this church for a little over three years. There's a lot that I could say about our dear sister Maurice for the kind of work that she does. And she's just that one person that you cannot compare to anybody else because the kind of work that she does. And she's like a leader outside of the church. They're bringing the churches together. She takes, she truly take the gospel out of the four walls and then to bring the community together. And she means a lot to our community. And I tell her every time, you're doing an amazing work. And I will stand, I will stand behind you to push the work that you're doing. Because you might not know the, how much impact your work is making in our community. But I just want you to keep going and I will be right behind you to make sure this work go where God's wanted to go. For the last four years, Pastor Jean Junior Francois has been the head pastor of another local church in Winter Haven called Philadelphia Haitian Baptist Church. He believes the work that Maïs does through her leadership forums is very beneficial for the local leaders. Many leaders have that tendency, think that uh, they are called just to lead without being led, without uh, any uh, training and things like that. And I think that is a great work that Sister Mary brings to the community of Winter Heaven. She offers a great opportunity to the leaders to get trained. It's like now they don't have to go far because some of them are unable to. She brings that training with qualified leaders, qualified speakers. So when we impact leaders, it's like we impact the communities because those leaders that you impact will produce that impact to other people. Winter Haven has a thriving Haitian community that is constantly growing. There's a lot of pride for Haitians in their country. This pride gives them hope despite the devastations happening currently in Haiti. This is freedom. I mean, this is how we know. And once we go somewhere, once, she, once they see the flag, they already know who we are. I know Haiti is going through some hardship right now. So today gives us hope that we can overcome as Haitian. If we get united, if we are together, I strongly believe it's not the end for Haiti. We can overcome what we are facing now. Organizations like Samarita and local church communities help meet the needs of people who may not have access to the help they need. So why is this important? It is important because this work that we do in the community is bigger than us. We, we are messengers. We are the one that he say go. And we go, sometimes we want to ask questions but one thing I often say in the church, we don't know the price of a soul. So therefore, we must be in the front line to save soul. So my work is so important because I like the testimony when I hear how people come to Christ when their life is saved and then how they transform. So it is very important. I love it. And sometimes it can be hard. But when you hear the testimony, that keeps you going. And when it comes to the importance of leadership, Pastor Francois says, the Leadership is very important because God needs men, people like me, like Pastor Saint Fleur, Marys, and so many others to do works through us. So we are called to be hands, heart, head of God in many ways. Therefore, leadership is very, very important. Winter Haven is popular for its chain of lakes, which is a series of 50 lakes connected by canals, and its claim to fame for being the water skiing capital of the world. But for Maïs, Winter Haven holds a special place in her heart because of the support of one man. The original pastor of this church, Pastor Winiel St. Fleur, um, shocked me. The father of Pastor Daniel St. Fleur. He believed in her mission and showed up for her during her very first conference along with his wife and another church pastor. I uh, was doing the conference and it was the very first one and it wasn't well attended. It was all the way in Orlando. And um, I had talked to him before because he's, he's like a father figure. He was a wonderful, wonderful pastor. Despite being very sick, we're doing the conference and in the middle of it, he comes walking in. And the thing about that was that he had been sick. He had been very sick. And I did not expect him to come in. He was the last person I would have expected to see. Despite being sick and barely able to stand, 
He and his wife made sure to leave her with an encouraging word that motivated Maiz to keep pushing forward with her mission. After the conference, they made sure that they came over to me and they said, look, this thing was so good. You need to continue it. Don't look at the number of people who are here. Don't look at the hardships, but you need to continue to do it. And that's all he had to say because everything that comes out of his mouth to me is gold. <laughs> so um, I listened to him and the following year, I was debating whether or not I should go back to Orlando. And I thought, eh, no, let me see. Maybe I can do it in Haines City. And in talking to him again, he says, well, you know, you got your church. It's available to you. And so the following year, we were able to hold it here. These people are so wonderful. And so um, here we are. Winter Haven is special to me for that reason because of Pastor Winiel Sefler. Windsor Haven is also where Maiz has vision to expand and grow. Tell me a little bit about your future endeavors here at the Winter Haven Garden Center. I know you said you're gonna be doing a conference. Yes, yes, this year the Lord has blessed us and we are moving our conference here, the leadership conference that we do annually. Um, and so it's gonna be held here. It's gonna be on the 13th of July. This place is so peaceful to me. I love the fact like, it, you know, once you go in, it's yours, the gates are closed and it's your peaceful environment. So that's, that's why I chose this place. And as for her vision for Samarita? For Samarita, I just want for more people to become aware of what we do and for more people to come on. And when I say come on, I don't mean for them to necessarily join Samarita. That's like the weirdest thing to say I know. Um, but for them to just get with the movement of doing good. So you can do good by yourself. You can set up shop under God's sun anywhere you want to and do good. You don't necessarily have to be part of Samarita, but I want Samarita to continue to exist to encourage people to do that. So that's my major goal, just to, to, just to have longevity and, and to make sure that, you know, the, 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 the vision that I had, that God gave me, that it's always present. It, whoever's, you know, it might be later on, who's running the organization. I don't want it to die with me. I don't want it to go down with me, but I want it to continue to exist. Getting her story out there is one step Maez is taking to help reach the people who need her help. If there was one word of encouragement she could leave behind, it would be. The people who find um, the most value in what we do are people who are, whose spirits are crushed. Let's put it this way. They've been through a major breakup. They've, they've lost a child, whatever. And sometimes they wonder, am I really able to come back? Maybe it's a business that's gone down in a bad way. And um, I wanna let them know that yes, you can come back. Yes, you can try again. You can always hit the reset button, you know? Um, they, there's always something better. Sometimes, you know, things happen and you think it's for the worst and they, there are better things waiting for you. And I always tell people for the things that I've gone through in my life, had I known that I would have been here today, God, girl, I would not have wasted a tear. I would not have wasted a tear if I knew that I was gonna be doing this like this today. Yeah. And so, you know, for the moment, things may seem terrible, but um, just do what you gotta do. And, and one day at a time, but again, every day, just inch a little bit forward, more than you did the day before. And before you know it, you'll realize things are getting better. Maize is doing her best to change the world one step at a time. With her heart set on doing God's will, her mission is just getting started. The impact she's making here in Winter Haven is bearing fruit, and in due time, it will reap an even bigger harvest. May God continue to bless Maize with the strength she needs to move, as she would say in her own words, so that she can always be moving forward, accomplishing more than she did the day before. One fun fact about me that nobody knows except for my family is that I am an avid sports enthusiast. Lie. What I do is whenever my brothers are watching sports, I pretend that I'm like the greatest fan and I ruin it for them. And I go in and I'm screaming and I'm hollering and I did it to Pastor Daniel. I went to his match and I was screaming and hollering a soccer game and I know nothing. And then I switch who I'm for. I'm always crying for the team that's losing. So I'm always for the team that's losing. So that's one fun fact about it. I think it's fun anyway. And to all my Haitians out there, always remember. L'Union fait la force. This is The Road to 1000 with 993 more to go. Stay tuned for more women's stories, adventures, and discoveries. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to leave a comment for my ease down below. And until next time, my name is Whitney, and I'm out. <laughs>
as he rounds the corner over there. Looks like he may be out, and there we go. 